Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sayright. In today's tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make wax canvas backpacks with leather accents and lining on the inside. These backpacks are available in a kit form in a variety of colors that you can select from the Sayrite website. Now these bags are rather intimidating to sew because there are a lot of steps, but we're going to take all the guesswork out of that and navigate you step by step so you'll learn a lot of sewing techniques when you make your wax canvas backpack. As mentioned, the inside of the backpack has a lining fabric which is a Cordura 500D fabric. This lining hides the raw edges of the seam allowance and gives the insides a neat finished appearance. Let's get started and show you how to make your own wax canvas backpack with leather accents. The first step is using the provided pattern to cut the waxed canvas and lining to size. Before we get started making this uh, backpack, I want to tell you a few things about the kit. The kit contains everything that you need to make this backpack, including the leather accents. Now, if you want to buy dyes and so forth, that's additional stuff that you need to buy, but the video will cover that. It also includes the pattern that is uh, plotted on our Durascrim material, so you can cut out all your fabric and your leather to size. And then there'll be a card with a QR code that will lead you to a PDF where you can print out the step-by-step -step process and you can watch the video and use the step-by-step -step process to build this uh, backpack because it's a little bit complicated and having the step-by-step -step procedures along with the video will definitely help you. So this is our pattern. So we're gonna cut this pattern into one, two, three, four sections. From the top, which is 5C, 4B, 1B, and 6A, all the way down to 3B right here, there's a space. This is the waxed canvas portion. Then from 3A here, all the way down to 2B and 2A down here, this is our lining fabric. 6B and 8A, that is our stiffener. And this over here that doesn't have any numbers is actually our leather for our leather accents. So even though I went over all of this, it is clearly marked on the PDF what each one of these numbered panels represents. We're gonna cut the, uh, the lining uh, from the uh, wax canvas first and we'll start with the wax canvas patterns. This is our waxed canvas. There's no right side or wrong side. So we've put our pattern on top of it. You can do one of two things. You can use pins or you can use a uh, Super 77 or Super 88 spray adhesive. If I were gonna use a spray adhesive, I'd turn this uh, so the back side is facing up and I'd spray the pattern material uh, and then let it tack up and then stick it to the wax canvas. And that works okay, but you do get a lot of overspray and you do have to buy s a spray glue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna pin it in place. And so what I do is I can use either the multi-use pins, which we'll show you first off here. So here's five C, A, and B. I wanna put a pin in each one of those. Just one pin is all that's necessary. So again, what I do with the multi-use pin is I pin it in one spot, typically in the middle of the panel. I push the pin halfway through, then I take my finger underneath and I push on the pin and I put my thumb over here on the fabric and voila, it goes right through. So with this pin, what I'll do is I'll put my hand underneath, pin through it, and it has a little bit of a tilt to it. So sometimes it's a little bit easier to get through the fabric. Um, it, I like the multi-use pins, that's my preference, but these work well. For long panels like 3B, what I'll do is I'll put a pin on each end, not just one. So one pin goes there, and then down on the other end, I will put a pin right down here. That keeps it nice and straight. Okay, we're gonna pin all these and I'll show you what's next. Okay, so I'm just using scissors to cut this. You could use a rotary cutter as well. You don't have to be exceptionally accurate. You just wanna be fairly accurate. And we're gonna cut all these out and then we'll show you them laid up on the table. Marks like this that you see in the middle, uh, those should not be cut on. These are actually marks for uh, specific tasks. So we're only gonna cut on the outside lines. So all of the patterns are cut out for the waxed canvas. We're gonna set these aside. We're gonna start uh, with the largest number and lay the preceding ones on top of that, 6A and 5B and so forth and set them aside. So this is the leather portion. We're gonna cut that out. And this is the stiffener portion, which is 6B and 6A. 
So this is our lining for this uh, colored bag, the uh, wax canvas sage. Um, this is a Cordura 500D and we'll put the pattern on top of it and we'll pin it in place just like we did with the other one or you can glue it if you'd like but just make sure the glue's dry before you put it down to the fabric. In this chapter we're going to cut the veg tan leather to the appropriate size. This is the pattern for our leather. These two are for the webbing straps. This is for the handle. These are for the straps with the locks fasteners that go over the front flap and these are actually reinforcement for the locks fastener. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put super 77 spray adhesive on the back side uh, so that we can stick this to our leather and notice that I have some scrap paper under here. I want this to dry uh, so it becomes tacky before I put it on the leather. This is our 5 inch by 15 inch uh, veg tan leather and I'm going to turn it to this uh, underside and I'm going to stick the pattern material to the underside and I'm going to have it go against one side. It's pretty straight already so that I don't have to make a cut there. And this sticks really well like this and this will make it possible for us to cut it to size. I have a cutting mat on the underside and I'm going to use this ruler. This ruler is pretty awesome because you can actually use a razor blade and not have to worry about cutting yourself. Um, make sure you use a new razor blade and we're going to cut uh, following the uh, edges of the pattern material. And that one's done and we'll cut down each one of these and cut these all apart and then we'll show you what's uh, next. If you'd rather not use the spray glue to glue the pattern material to the leather, I'm going to show you a different option. So if you don't want to use your Duraskrim pattern material and glue it to the back side of the leather, which I understand, you can actually just cut four strips to one and a quarter inches. And I've already done that with the clear acrylic ruler, so that makes it pretty easy. And I just cut it with a razor blade that way. And then I can take my patterns and I can lay them on this. Now I like to put the top side up here and I can lay it on here and determine the length of each one of these just with the scratch all. So I know I need to cut it straight across there and then we'll round the corner. So now that I have that mark on there I can use the clear acrylic ruler to make sure that this is going to be perpendicular to the cut edge because you can see through it and simply cut. Okay they're all cut apart here and we need to cut the corner so I'm going to use this uh, Damascus Japanese leather sewing knife to do this. You could also use a razor blade. Here's the straight side and there's the beveled side. So we're going to use this to round the corners and we'll just chop away until we get the desired look that we want. And if you don't want to spend the money on one of these things you can do this with a razor blade. It's just a little bit tougher. We'll show using the razor blade next. And use a scratch all to uh, duplicate or to transfer the corners to the leather. Here we're using a utility knife with a very sharp blade. Is the other tool easier and more accurate? Probably. But this will get the job done and we'll do a little bit of sanding there. Now I will say that you can actually just leave the leather as it is here, not put any oil on it, not finish off the edges but uh, that can be done as well. I'd probably still sand a little bit on these edges with a, a, a coarse uh, sandpaper and then a fine sandpaper. Uh, it's your choice. If you'd like to finish your leather, this chapter will show you how we do it. The kits come with four to five ounce veg tan leather. Dyeing and finishing the leather is optional. The kits do not include any of the finishing products that will be used to oil, dye, and finish the leather. Those items are sold separately if you choose to finish the leather. We will still be showing the whole process of finishing the leather. Feel free to skip ahead if you will not be doing that. If you're just going to uh, oil your leather, your veg tan leather, uh, what I'd recommend is this Neats Foot Oil and obviously a wool dauber and then the gum trag. So if you're not going to be using dye, I recommend oiling both the uh, front side and the back side a little bit. This is a side that will be sewn under, but that just keeps it from drying out. If you plan on dyeing your leather, that's a choice you can make, then you would still need the oil. Uh, you would still need the gum 
drag, but you change the order so that the die comes first, then you finish the edges with gum drag, and then you seal it with Resiline. So these are the four products you'll need for dye, and if you don't dye, these are the two products that you'll need. All right, after we've oiled it, and we don't have to let it dry anytime, we're gonna bevel the edges with the number one beveler here, and uh, we're just gonna come across the leather like so. This kind of creates a 45. When I get to the ends, you can just work around the ends. I sometimes go back and forth. And we still have to sand these ends a little bit, but we'll do that after we do the edge beveling. So we're going to do this on all the pieces. Now, at the top edges here, here, and here, and on this one, we don't have to worry about this. These are going to be hidden. This is the handle, so we have to go all the way around that one. So now that we have the edges beveled, uh, you can take uh, some uh, sandpaper and you can actually, if you, the shape's not perfect, you can actually make the shape fairly perfect with this. It sands very easily, as you can see. And I actually like to kind of go to the top side but not scratch the top a little bit so that this is more rounded rather than a 45. And then I take a finer grit sandpaper and you can go over it with that. So we'll probably do this on all the edges a little bit uh, just to make it so that they are not so sharp uh, and then use the fine sandpaper. Now another way to do that, I'll just get another one here, is to use the leather burnishing machine from Sailrite. And on here I have a, I think it's a 320 uh, sandpaper, so it's really fine. And I will turn it on uh, to fairly low and we can also round the corners with this. And this does take a little bit of practice. The more you do, the, the better you'll get at it. Sometimes I hold it down here like that and do it. And see that? We just wanna start, try to make these corners look the same. So multiple ways to do this. If you weren't going to dye it, you would move on and you do the gum trag. Uh, we're going to dye it and then we'll show this process. So, but it would be the same thing as if you had dyed it. So we're going to use uh, the moccasin brown and I've already opened this up and I'm going to use a wool dabber here and just dip it in here. You can dilute it down as, if you'd like as well, but I'm going to do one light pass so that it's not heavily coated in this. And make sure you use paper on your tabletop with maybe some plastic underneath. So I'm going to go across it like this with one coat. And then I'm going to touch the edges. This is going to be on, we on uh, webbing. This is the handle. So I don't have to worry about the underside of this one. And we're going to set that one aside. Now th these two are actually... Uh, the uh, straps that come down and about a quarter of the bottom will show. So we're going to coat the uh, top side and we're going to flip it over and we're going to get about a quarter of this uh, coated on the underside because you will see this. And then we'll do the edges. Okay, so we're going to do that with these two long strips and everything else we're just going to coat just like we did the first one. Okay, the more dye you put on, the darker they'll become. I only put the one coat on and I love the uh, look of it. It actually shows some of the uh, texture of the leather. The next phase after we let it dry overnight is to use this on the edges and then to seal it up with the resiline. And remember, you would not need to use the resiline if you didn't use a dye. This just seals in the dye. We'll show that after it dries. All right, so our dye is completely dry. We're going to apply the gum trag to the edges. If you didn't dye it and use the oil, uh, you could apply this right away. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my finger. Now, you can do it on multiple uh, ways, but uh, basically just dip your finger in there and start coating the edges uh, and, and coat it well. And you may wanna do this a couple times. Don't worry if you get some on the front surface and the back surface, it's, it's going to actually not affect anything much. 
but I do try to keep it more on the edges than anywhere else. So the top edge is not going to be visible, so I'm not going to be worried about that on any of them except for the two small uh, uh, squares. So let's do this to all of them, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so we have the uh, gum trag on it, and you can buff it with a rag, which I'm going to show here. So this part has not been buffed yet, and I'll just go over it with a rag here. And if you don't like the appearance, you can put more on and do this again. So that's looking pretty good there. Uh, I might put a little bit more on there, but let's go to this side, which hasn't been done, and we're going to use the leather burnishing machine. And what I'll do is I'll start here, move here, here, and here. And we want to do this at a fairly slow speed. Now, usually I work in front of the machine, but I'm just trying to make sure that you can see what's going on here. So we're going to go over this edge. This makes for quick work. Um, so you don't have to do as much buffing. If you've got a lot of leather, if you like to do leather after you're done doing this project, you may want to consider purchasing this. It's also got a sanding uh, drum on the other side, so you can actually sand your leather with a, a very fine sandpaper or, or even coarse sandpaper. So I'm going to do all the edges with this one first, then I'm going to move to this one, and we'll move progressively to smaller uh, slots as we do this. And again, I don't want to burn the leather, I just want to seal the ends and uh, it should look really good when we're done. So one more slot here and we could put more of the gum trag uh, on and do this again if you, you wanted even a, a more polished look. But let's show you what this looks like here. Alright, so what do we got? Mm, yeah, look at that, it's starting to look good. Yeah, in my opinion, this is uh, acceptable just the way it is, but uh, it, again, it's, it's totally up to you. So we're going to put our wool dauber in here, and we're going to go over this. Now you want, this will dry quickly. And uh, once you have it on here, then take a microfiber rag and go over it to knock the bubbles out. Kind of like in one pass usually is enough to do it. We definitely want to get it on the sides as well. We don't want this, uh, uh, the dyes to bleed on anything, your clothing or even the bag. So uh, there's going to be some air bubbles in it, but I'm going to just touch the sides on all the sides. And then we're going to go over it. Now it dries pretty quick, so do this quickly because you've got to knock out those air bubbles. Okay, so now we got that done. Now I'm going to use a my microfiber towel and I'm going to hold on to it and knock those bubbles out like that. And what I'm going to do now is if you want it to be sealed really well, you may want to put another coat on and I really do it almost immediately uh, after I knock the bubbles out. So the more coats, the more sealed you get. Now this is more important with lighter fabrics than anything else. Darker fabrics probably won't have any bleed, much bleeding on it, but if you're doing the pink uh, backpack, you definitely want to put on a few coats uh, to make sure that we're sealing all the dyes in. Now on the two uh, strips that are going to be used with the uh, fastener, we want to turn them over. I remember how we uh, did this side, we want to put the sealer over there because this will be exposed on the underside. So this you don't have to worry about as much of the air bubbles because there's just a lot of roughness to the back side. So we're going to do that to the, both pieces on the back side. We're not going to do that to any other piece on the back side because it's all going to be on fabric or on webbing. Visit the Sayrite website to pick your favorite dye color for your leather. Making the front outside pocket is next. That's assembly one. This is assembly one. This is one A. There are two lines here and one line here and a middle line here. First thing I'm going to do, the, the pattern material is still pinned to it, is I'm going to cut a small little notch at the center position at the bottom, and then I'm going to lift my pattern material up and fold it back so I can see those marks here on the sides, and I'm going to use my chalk, uh, which does come off with a wet rag, and you want to verify that, uh, depending on the fabric that you're using, 
to mark that location. Then I'll fold this down here to this line and just fold it at that line and then mark it here. For 1B, I have two uh, pluses and we just basically want to mark that location as well. So we'll fold it there and then obviously we have a line going here. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Okay, we're going to start with 1B and we're going to remove the pattern and you can keep this pattern if you'd like so you can make more in the future. And then we have our little squares that we did uh, from our accent leather, uh, which is veg tan, and they need to be centered over the plus and nice and straight, uh, parallel with the edge. So we're going to start with one here and sew this in place, and then we're going to take measurements to make sure this one is exactly in the same location. Because if we're slightly off, it's not a huge deal, but I definitely want to try to keep the plus centered. To sew this backpack, we'll be using the Ultrafeed LSE and a few items from the optional packages that you can purchase separately. From the Speed Reducer Upgrade Package, we've mounted the Monster 2 Balance Wheel to our machine for optimal slow speed control and power. From the Leathercraft Package, we use the Fabric and Leather Clips, all triangular point leather needles, and the Thread Burner. And finally, from the Bag Making Package, we use the Knurled Feed Dog and Presser Foot, Magnetic Guide, Thread Nippers, and the Seam Ripper. Any of those items can also be ordered a la carte. I wound uh, four bobbins. This uh, backpack will basically take four bobbins unless you make some mistakes. It may take a little bit less. That way I have them all pre-wound. We're using V92 thread with a size number 20 needle and I have some scrap of the wax canvas. I've already sewn in the wax canvas and you can see that it does leave a little bit of marks from the presser foot. That is not uncommon and uh, totally acceptable. It actually, wax canvas looks good when you kind of bunch it up like that. See how it looks awesome that way? So what I want to do before I sew my patches on is take some of the scrap leather, the veg tan leather that comes in the kit, uh, and you will have scrap, and you want to make sure that your stitch tension looks good. I have my stitch length set for about three millimeters in length, which I think looks good, and it also gives us the capability to round corners nicely because the stitch is not so long. So test it out in your leather and make sure that your knot is not coming up on the top side. Uh, and if anything, your knot should be on the back side, um, but you don't want it so loose that you'd have loose stitches on the back. I actually think this looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like the knot's on the top, but that's actually the hole from the uh, needle that has created that, so there is no knot on the top side. So this is a leather compass, and you can use this uh, uh, thumb nut basically to uh, sh shrink it up or expand the gap. And what I like to do is around three millimeters, which is about an eighth of an inch, as you can see here. And I'm gonna take it, and this will help us to keep our stitch nice and straight. I'm gonna start it at about an eighth inch from the edge here. And this scores the leather. Now don't be concerned about the fact that it's, it's taking away some of your uh, dye, um, because th that's where your stitches will rest. Nice. So we're going to do this to the second one as well. Probably going to do this to all the pieces. So this uh, will make it easier for sewing. So I have this on nice and straight. It's not basted or anything, so just make sure that you keep it on nice and straight. I'm, when my presser foot is up, I'm going to lower my needle in that uh, corner. And notice that we're going right over those uh, scored lines. And I'm going to bury the needle slightly, and then I'm going to lower my foot. Okay. I'm also going to take the Worker Bee Power Pack system. This is phenomenal for leather. And I'm going to turn it down all the way to the slowest speed. And we do have the Monster 2 balance wheel on it so that we will get really great slow speed control. Uh, and watch, watch how slow we can go. So I'm going to start sewing here. I'm not going to do any reversing. And I'm going to follow. I can see through this foot because it has a fairly large opening. Look how slow I can sew. Now when I get to that uh, uh, corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury my needle there. I'm probably one stitch away. Let's see if I land on it. If I don't, I'll use the reverse lever. Okay, I'm a little bit too far, so I'm going to push down on the reverse lever slightly, which will get me to go backwards a little bit. This will mean that it's a smaller stitch, but I do want to hit that corner. There we go. We hit the corner perfectly. 
Okay, so now I can let go of my reverse lever and I want to make sure my needle is coming up. So I'm going to grab the balance wheel and I'm going to rotate until I see the needle still going down. We want that needle to come up so that we don't get a skip stitch. So it's come up a slight bit. Now I can either lift my foot or I can just pivot on the leather and it's pretty easy to pivot on the leather to make that turn and then we just sew down this side yet again. Now when we do curves in the leather, the process is a little bit different and we'll show you that when we get there. Okay, so I'm coming up to where I began sewing and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bury that needle in that uh, first hole that we created. All right, a little bit right there. Look how slow we got, bam. And we can make one more stitch going up, which is not a bad idea. So I'm just gonna basically uh, turn that corner and I'm gonna bury the needle in the first stitch and I'm gonna stop, so right there. Okay, needles coming up and out. We lift up our foot and that one is done. We're gonna cut our threads a little bit long so that we can melt them. So just like, oops, just like that. This is a nifty little tool. It's a sewing gauge ruler. So I can hold it up to the bottom of my leather as you can see here and then I can just bump this out until it comes up against the edge of the uh, canvas. And then I know exactly where the height of this one is so it's directly across from it. Now we want that cross to be in the center so I'll just do this until it is even right there, and we know that's perfect. We're gonna sew this one on in the same manner. So we're gonna melt these threads, and that will hopefully keep it from coming through that hole, and then I just press on it with my finger, and it kind of creates a mushroom end, and that should seal it up nicely. And we'll do this for this one as well. This is the Sayrite Drill Hole Cutter, 3 8 inch, the number two size. I'm gonna put it in a drill, and then I'm gonna use a cutting pad on the back side. And we wanna punch a hole through this for our locks faster. And we want this centered, so do this carefully uh, before you drill. Make sure that it's perfectly centered. If it's off, it's your own fault. The last chapter of this video will show what comes with the kit and what does not. That's all it takes to it. And we should have a hole that goes right through it, and we do. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. Uh, we're gonna take a stud. This is the uh, antique brass, I believe it's what it's called. We're gonna push it through the back side, and then we're gonna take the uh, washer and we're gonna thread it on. Now, there aren't a lot of threads sticking up, so you have to get it threaded first uh, because that leather keeps it from wanting to thread. There we go, I think we got it, yep. And then we're gonna take the key, which is included in the kit some uh, words on here that says made in Germany. I like to have that reading up. So I'll position it that way. That's not a rule. That's a preference. Okay, the bottom will lock in place because it has teeth. I'm going to do one more rotation with the words facing up. And there we go. We're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, we're on step four, which is 1C, which is the gusset. So we're gonna take the pattern off of it. We don't need to mark any other lines on this. And what we're gonna do with the gusset is we're going to fold it in half lengthwise. Remember, there's no right side or wrong side to the waxed canvas. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew the two short ends, three eighths of an inch away from the ends. We were at three millimeters to sew the leather. I'm gonna uh, put it up at about four to five millimeters. I don't have to be exact. I just wanna try to mimic that throughout the pro process. And then I'm gonna turn the Worker B Power Pack system up to full power because I don't need slow speed for this. I'm gonna put the magnetic guide down, which is right here. I know that that's about three eighths inch away from the needle when it's in the center position. Hold my trailing threads and sew through this, doing some reversing in the beginning and the end, then we'll turn this over here to do the other short side, and we will do the same thing here. Reverse a little bit and reverse at the end. Okay, let's take this out, cut the threads, and I'll show you what's next. We're gonna trim the corners here because this is gonna be turned wrong right side out, and we'll do the other the same thing to this end. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this right side out. So I'm gonna take this and push my fingers in here, which creates a beautiful end. And you can take a sharp object and push that out all the way. 
We're gonna do the same thing over here. I like to use these pliers, these edge guide pliers, and basically put it in the corner to push it out against that seam. That way we have it nice and straight. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a, a top stitch. The top stitch is about a quarter inch from the raw edges. We are not gonna do a top stitch here, only on the raw edge, this is the folded edge. So a quarter inch is right here with the outside foot uh, lined up. And uh, I'm not even gonna do any reversing here because this is basically just a tack stitch to hold it in place. So we're gonna sew all the way to the other end and we'll show you what's next. This is the lining, 1D is the panel. Remove the pattern and this has a right side and a wrong side. The back side of this Cordura 500D, it has a urethane coating. The right side is uncoated. So right sides always face each other. This is obviously the right side of our pocket. This is the right side of our lining fabric. Line it up to the top edge and we'll sew 3 8 inch right along the top, reversing at the beginning and the end. We're not gonna show that. All right, so our lining is sewing on here. Now we're gonna take our gusset and we are going to uh, have the raw edge, which is the edge that's sewing, lined up here. And we're gonna use uh, fabric and leather clips and we're gonna clip it around the perimeter. I like to have the red up and the clear down because the, that makes it easier for feeding in the sewing machine. When I get to the corner, down here, I'm gonna actually, because this has to take a corner, I'm gonna cut little clips in this. And it doesn't matter if you go into your seam allowance, that's basically a tacking stitch. So we just wanna clip it approximately in a quarter inch around that rounded corner. So it takes that corner nicely. See how it opens up like that? And we'll clip that in place and we'll do that all the way up to the top here. Now make sure you don't cut deeper than 3 8 of an inch because that's going to be your, uh, your final stitch. So when you're, you're making those slits, don't go too, too far. So what's important with this gusset is that it comes up here and it falls into this uh, seam allowance where you have the uh, lining in the wax canvas. If you need to make a modification, like we do, are a slight bit off, all you do is basically just come short of that corner. That is not going to make any uh, difference at all. Again, the important part is the top edge here and the top edge here. All right, so I'm going to sew 3 8 inch uh, and I'm going to sew this gusset on. I removed my first clip. I'm going to start right here at the top and I do want to do a little bit of reversing here. We are going to have another top stitch as well. I'm going to sew down this corner. Since we have everything clipped in place, we know exactly where everything should fall. But when we get to the corner, it's going to be a little tricky. Not too tricky though. So watch. Okay, so here I've got a clip, but the, can the canvas is not going to want to fold, this wax canvas. So you almost have to introduce a few little wrinkles. What you want is you want the area where you're going to sew to be as flat as possible. So I'm going to remove this clip. I'm going to press down on the wax canvas to work those wrinkles out around the edge. And then I'm just going to follow that edge. Don't worry about the wrinkles as long as they're not being sewn in. And even if they are, it's not a huge deal if you sew a little teeny wrinkle in because it is wax canvas and it looks good with wrinkles. Okay, we got around the corner. We're gonna sew all the way to the top edge and do some reversing, and we'll show you what's next. Okay, so we have this done, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in. We're gonna flatten this with our fingers. Flatten this with our fingers. We're gonna take this lining. We're gonna fold it over the top here, and we do wanna make sure that we don't sew this bottom open because we have to pull this right side out. So we're gonna start sewing here, and sew all the way here, do some reversing here, and we're gonna sew here and do some reversing so that it doesn't rip out. We are gonna show this. We wanna sew 3 8 inch from this edge so that it falls on that same stitch line. So I'm gonna put it up against the magnetic guide and we're gonna start sewing here at the top and we're gonna do some reversing here. Okay, and match up the edge. Everything should be nice and flat. We already have a stitch kind of holding everything in place, so all you gotta do is follow that turn. If they're a little bit off, if one panel is a little bit off than the other, don't worry about it. Nobody will ever know, not even yourself. When I get to, uh, to the straightaway right here, I'm gonna do some reversing, because I'm gonna turn this right side out, because I don't want that to rip out. Then I'm gonna just make sure my needle's out, lift my foot, and I'm gonna uh, not even cut my threads and go to the next straightaway 
lower my foot, do some reversing here so we can turn it right side out and sew all the way to the top. We're gonna clip the corners. This reduces the bulk here. Don't clip into your stitching. And then at the bottom, we're going to actually cut some triangles out of it uh, to allow it to take this turn. We're gonna do this to both corners. So now we have this uh, hole at the opening, which I barely have enough room to put my hand in, but I can push the top through and we gotta turn this right side out. This is the reason we did all that reversing because you do have to work the canvas. And this is why it doesn't matter if the canvas comes to you folded up from Sayerite with creases because you're gonna put more creases in it. Look at that, it's coming. It's coming. It's not that hard actually. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew from gusset to gusset doing a little bit of reversing. This is gonna be a top stitch, which means it's a quarter inch from the folded edge, which means I use the center foot's right side and uh, keep the needle in the center position if you have an ultra feed LSZ. If you have the LS1, you just wanna sew a quarter inch from this edge. Now, when you run into this bump, you may have to help push the fabric through. So I'm using my fingers to push it a little bit because we're not using the sawtooth presser feet. There we go. And when we get to the other side, we're gonna do some reversing there as well. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna turn it over to the lining side and we have this opening at the bottom here. And what we wanna do is we wanna uh, turn the gusset to the lining. And at the same time, I'm gonna to try to position this so you can see it. It'd be better if this was sort of working away from my face, um, but I'm gonna do it like that. So I fold that bottom so it creates a finished look at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and then what I want to do while that's folded like that is I want to take this and I want to fold it over so that it's on our uh, stitch. So right here, it, it, that closes up the hole and it also uh, gives us the opportunity to create a top stitch here. So I'm going to just take two clips down here because I, I want that to stay in, in position and I'm not going to start sewing from the bottom. So I'm going to do that and that will hopefully hold the lining in place as we sew around the perimeter. So we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. We're gonna fold this back towards the lining, the gusset. We're gonna create, crease it on that line. When you get to the corner, you're gonna have some wrinkles at the corner and you're gonna smooth it out so that you're not sewing very many wrinkles in or any at all. And we'll show you that next. Now I like to increase the upper tension when I'm doing a top stitch on the edge like this, so I'm gonna turn it to about a half revolution just so that I make sure I have a good bottom stitch. And I'm gonna put this in so I'm sewing a top stitch. Now this is bulky. Um, you need a good heavy duty sewing machine because corners are bulky for this. That's why we're sewing it with the Ultra Feed. Okay, this is a lot of bulk here, so go slowly here and do one stitch and do a little bit of reversing and then sew around. Once we get past that bump, it won't be so hard. There we are, we're finally past it. Okay, so now press the material as you sew so that you're on that, that uh, stitch that we had just previously did. Everybody's gonna see this stitch, so do this accurately and as neatly as possible. I'm gonna go around one corner and then hopefully you'll have the idea for the rest of it. I'm folding it nicely. Wax canvas has a mind of its own, so it folds beautifully. That's one reason I love to use wax canvas. Now when I get to the corner, there's gonna be some wrinkles, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll use my edge matchup pliers, and I'll actually push those wrinkles out where I'm gonna sew, and make sure that I'm on that first stitch. So you can see a few little wrinkles there, but they're really small, and we're really not sewing them in. We're trying to just press them out as much as possible and I'm following that uh, corner as I go, pressing out the wrinkles. If you don't have these, you could use a screwdriver to do this, but we will be using them in a later step that I think is pretty important. All right, so now we'll do that all around the corner and up to the top again, and you'll have uh, all the technique you need for this. We're gonna use the clear acrylic ruler, which I highly recommend, and we're gonna place it on that chalk mark 
and make sure that this edge is parallel to it. I'm going to mark from mark to mark approximately, it doesn't have to be exactly here, the bottom edge. And then I'm going to put it on this line and that line and mark it parallel to this edge, uh, not all the way up. So let me show you here. So make sure that it's parallel, let's see. So we're going to mark on this and we're going to go up, not all the way, uh, probably about that far. Now we're going to take our exterior pocket and we're going to place it um, so that this edge, now I know this edge is inside, don't worry about that, but this edge is uh, basically in line with that. If I look straight down, I can see it's in line with that chalk there. And what I do this for is I do this to indicate where the top of the bag comes at this location. So here's the top edge. I'm going to put a mark there and then I'm going to take my clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to make sure that I am parallel to the top edge and put a mark on this side so that we know that the bag will be perfectly uh, square and, and in the right spot when we're, we pin it to it. So I'm going to take this and we have this chalk line here and I'm going to start here making sure that this is right on that line. So I'm going to pin it at this location at the top here and the best technique for pinning is to pin in this direction because we're going to start sewing here and I'll be able to easily pull the pin. So I'm going to insert the pin halfway into my assembly like we talked about earlier and then I'm going to put my finger over here and press on the pin to make sure that it goes through the fabric. So that is pinned in location. So then I'm going to come over here and do the exact same thing here making sure that I'm on my chalk mark and that this is lined up. I'm going to pin it this direction so that I can easily pull the pin when I get to the sewing machine. So let's pin this and then I'll show you what we do at the bottom. At the bottom, now I don't usually pin anything else but I do pin the bottom here. And we want this bag to be centered between left and right here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of push the, the pocket out of the way and try to make that look uh, nice and centered and I'm going to pin it going this direction so that I can easily pull the pin at the sewing machine here. So three pins basically hold this pocket in place and we have those lines as a guide for when we are sewing so that we can easily uh, make sure the bag is nicely squared on our front. We're going to start here and we don't need the magnetic guide so I'm going to take that off and get it out of the way. I'm going to do a top stitch which means it's a quarter inch from that folded edge so I'm right at the right side of that center foot. I'm going to hold on to my trailing threads and I am going to do some reversing here at the top. That should do it. Now we're coming up upon our pin. We don't need it here because we have everything pinned in place but we do want to follow that white line here. Okay, So I'm lining it up with the white line. Sewing down. You can push this part of the pocket over if that helps you uh, to get a visual of what you're doing. And we'll go around one corner showing you how we do that and uh, then we'll sew to the top. So see how this corner is kind of rounded here? I don't expect it to fall on the lines at the corner obviously, uh, but let's sew up to that. Okay, so I'm going to bury my needle and then I like to actually use a tool and kind of pull. I like to pull that corner kind of into that and then flatten the waxed canvas like that where I'm going to be sewing. And, I, and that looks like a beautiful corner. Now the presser foot's going to go over this and it's going to create kind of a bump and that's okay. So watch this. Go slow. So when I get to this middle pin down here, um, everything's tacked in place so I can pull that pin. See how easy it is to pull the pin if you put them in right? And we will work around this corner in the same manner and then do some reversing at the top. So I'm going to insert my hand in here and see these little wrinkles that you may be saying, oh no, that's wrinkled. Look how nice it looks with the wax canvas. It actually comes out beautiful like that. All right, this is the front pocket of our assembly. One, we're ready for assembly two. I'm just going to cut my threads with a thread burner. That kind of keeps them at a minimal. 
You don't have to do this, you could just use scissors. Next up, we'll be creating the inside back lining with pocket. Assembly two is 2A, 2B, and 2C. This is the inside lining with the inside pocket. We're gonna take the pattern material off. We do have a mark here at the bottom on 2C, so I'm gonna make sure that the pattern is uh, directly centered, and I'm gonna cut my triangular mark in that, because we'll use that later on, and we'll take our patterns off. We're gonna take these two smaller panels of, uh, and we're gonna lay them so outside surfaces are facing each other. That means the urethane is on the underside here and top side here. And we're gonna sew uh, all the way around, leaving the bottom unsewn so we can pull this right side out. This is the bottom. We're gonna basically start here because we're gonna leave this bottom open and we're gonna sew close to this edge. So basically a top stitch, which is, means it's a quarter inch from the raw edge. And you do want to do some reversing here because you are going to be uh, pulling the assembly right side out. And all we're going to do is sew around this perimeter. This is creating the inside pocket so that the inside of this pocket has a lining. So it's pretty nice. Uh, we're going to sew all the way to the, over here and do reversing and we'll show you what's next. Before turning it right side out, I'm going to clip, clip these corners. Uh, that'll just make it for a nicer corner. And then I also like to just trim down here at the bottom, very close to my stitch here. We're going to turn this right side out now and you can either put your hand inside or kind of push it out. I like to actually push it out from the top. And then we want to stick an object in here to push the corners out. I like to just take a screwdriver in and push it in and kind of work around the perimeters. That kind of pushes things out. And then you can take the other end and you can push out the corners a little bit better. We didn't show clipping some notches here and clipping the corners. We should have done that, but it still works in the end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold this bottom um, so that the you know, I have two folds and the bottom looks nice. And uh, then I'm going to clip it with two clips in place. One here and one over here. Okay, so now push the air out. Make sure that you're happy with the shape of it. it should be kind of square at the top and a little bit rounded at the corners. So the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to sew this top edge. This is a straight edge with a top stitch a quarter inch from here. Then we'll bring it over here and we'll assemble it to this. We're not going to show this. We're going to take this panel. This is the bottom edge and we're going to mark, not mark, we're going to actually just put the clear acrylic ruler about three inches up from the edge. That's where I like to put this pocket. And then we want to center it from left to right. And I will actually pin it in place. So again, we're going to run the pins this direction because they're going to start sewing here. I'm going to pin it at the bottom and the two sides, and then we're going to show you what's next. I didn't put any pin at the bottom because we have these clips down there. I'm going to do a top stitch really close to the edge here, and we definitely want to do some reversing at the top, like that. When I get to the pin, I'll pull the pin out, and we're just going to sew around this perimeter. And around this corner slowly with the worker bee power pack system that makes it job really easy and then we don't have to worry about this fold because we clipped it so I'll just remove the first clip holding it down with my fingers and then the second when we get close to it and we'll work all the way to the top edge over here and do some reversing the finished size of this pocket is almost ten and a half inches here's a old Chromebook and it fits nicely in there. So you can put your computer on the inside of your backpack. Preparing the gusset or the side of the bag for the main body is next. So now we're preparing the gusset. This is the main body gusset. We have 3A and 3B. 3A is the wax canvas. There's a middle point where you can use your scissors and cut the triangle in it, or I can use notchers and do it with this as well. So we're gonna do it there, and we're also gonna do it on 3A in the middle positions. We're going to notch there, which doesn't work as well on this lighter fabric. We're going to take a looped uh, fastener system and cut it to two strips to four inches. This is 3A. I'm going to remove the pattern material all the way to this first mark you can see right here and just put a line there. And then I'm going to pull it back a little bit further to the next mark here, right there, and put a little line here. 
And then we can remove the pattern material from both of these. Okay, so let's move the wax canvas out of the way and work with our lining material. So we're going to put the loop fastener system to the inside, in other words, this side of the lines on both sides and make sure that it's uh, centered. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be roughly centered from top to bottom. And we're going to sew it. All right, so I just folded up the material in the throat of the sewing machine and I'm going to sew uh, straight down this leg. Uh, doing some reversing at the beginning and the end. We're not going to sew with the short ends, but I am going to make sure I do plenty of reversing there. And this is going to be on the underside of the bag. No one's going to see this, so it doesn't have to be exactly accurate here. And we're going to do it on this side in the same manner, and then we're going to do the same thing to this second strip on this side. So our checklist for assembly three says we're going to take this thing we just sewed the uh, loop onto which is the lining, and this is going to have our stiffener on it, so on the bottom of the side of the bag, and we're going to take our wax canvas, there's no right side or wrong side, and place it so outside surfaces are facing each other, though there is no outside surface. Then we're going to take it to the machine, and we are going to sew, which I'm not going to show, I'm going to sew uh, 3 8 inch away from this edge, reversing here and here, and on the opposite end as well, and we'll come back to this table. Now we're going to trim the corners to reduce the bulk and don't cut into your seam allowance. We're going to do that at the other end as well. We're going to take this assembly and we're going to turn it right side out. So this is going to be facing out and it looks like, oh, how do you do this? But it's not that hard. <laughs> it's a little confusing because it's long. There we go, it's right side out, and we're going to press it on this, uh, the seams, so we're on that first stitch. I went ahead and clipped it in the ends and also at the center locations just to keep everything intact. It's always better to sew with the canvas that's going to be seen out on top rather than on the bottom, so our lining is on the bottom side. So we're going to sew a quarter inch all around the perimeter, and here at the beginning I'm going to do some reversing and we're going to sew to the corner. Let me remove this clip as soon as I get to it. And when I get to the corner, I'm going to stop at about a quarter inch from the edge, needle coming up slightly, uh, rotate on the buried needle with my foot up, lower my foot, and don't worry if the edges are off a little bit, that's not going to matter at all, and sew down all sides until I get to the beginning point. Making the webbing shoulder straps is next, and it'll be accented with some leather. Okay, making webbing straps is next. We're going to take the one and a half inch webbing and cut two strips to 41 inches. If you don't have a hot knife, you can use scissors, and then you can just melt the end with a lighter carefully. Okay, these are our leather accents for our webbing, and they're seven and a half inches. That's, that way you know which ones they are. They're going to go to the top of the webbing. There is no top and bottom yet, but as soon as this is put on, it'll be the top. They'll be centered between the webbing and flush with the top, and we're going to sew around the perimeter. We're going to use this leather compass and mark it about an eighth inch from the edge, uh, and we'll use this as our guide for sewing around the perimeter. When we get to the corner, let me just show you this. We'll just go around like this. And then you have something to follow, especially at the rounded corners like this. The other corner that we did earlier was more of a 90 degree. This one's more rounded. We are set up for three millimeter stitch length and I confirmed that in some scrap. We're going to put this on here and center it and we are going to sew with the uh, Worker Bee Power Pack system at the minimal speed so we have full control. So now our top end speed will only go so fast. We're going to put the needle on the mark that we made with our leather compass. You can also do that with an awl if you don't have that. And bury it in there and then lower our presser foot. We can see through this larger foot so that we can easily sew the leather. So let's get started. No reversing is done here and we'll just make sure that our stitch uh, falls in the same spot all the way down this length. If you're not in your groove, 
um, then just stay consistent down the entire length. I'm a little bit off, uh, but it's, it's good, very, very close. And make sure that you keep that leather centered in this webbing strip as you sew. Now, when we get to the corner, I'll show you what we do when we go get there. We're coming to the corner here, and because we have the Worker Bee Power Pack system, I can sew super slow, and I can follow the line that I etched in the leather. So when I get to a part where I need to turn slightly, I'm gonna make sure the needle's buried, and then not turn when the needle's out, but when the needle is buried, that way my stitch length is consistent. I'm gonna start canting it that way because we have a sort of a rounded corner here. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more, the needle's buried, and notice that uh, I can just turn it with the presser foot still down. And then I'm gonna turn it some more. Because of the slow speed control, man, do we have good stitch quality. These are the 4A assemblies. They are for the uh, straps. So we're gonna take the pattern off. We'll take these and we will fold them in half, uh, like so. And I'll do this one. So this is the longer side. Fold against that. Or that's the raw side, I should say. All right, then we take our end of our webbing and it doesn't matter really which side of the webbing it goes on right now because uh, <coughs> eventually we're going to uh, cut this in half to put our buckle on. We're gonna put it on like this. I've set my stitch length to four millimeters again, four or five, whichever I sewed for the primary project. I'm gonna put this at about three eighths of an inch. So my stitch is about three eighths of an inch from the raw edge. And then we're gonna sew across this. Um, I'm going to do some reversing here. We're going to sew all the way to the raw edge, and then I'm going to just hold my reverse lever down, and I'm sewing on the inside of my seam allowance, basically just as a reinforcement for the webbing. And then I'll do it one more time going this direction into the webbing and stop there. So we have three stitches in the webbing. We'll cut our threads and then what we'll do is we'll turn this right side out and that creates a finished edge for our strap for the webbing as you can see we don't have to do any hems or anything like that and we'll do the same thing to the other piece of webbing at the end we're going to cut this what i call a dog ear i hope i can coin that term off of both pieces. Now notice that these pieces are laying up with the webbing up and they're going in the wrong direction. We definitely don't want that. And, uh, but that can be resolved uh, in this next step. Okay, we're gonna cut from the leather accent in to 14 inches, which is uh, shown here on the tempered cutting glass. I'm gonna use a hot knife. Again, you can use scissors and then you just have to melt the edges with a, hot, with a lighter or something like that. Um, one and two. We're going to feed it through the back opening like this and then we're going to come uh, around here and then on the back side we will sew that. Make sure that you have a tail of about one inch. I'm going to go a little bit further. It doesn't have to be exact but it should be the same on both of them. So there's one inch and we'll do the same thing to this one. Go in the back and do the same thing. I used a fabric and leather clip and clipped it in place. That way I don't have to worry about it moving on me. I'm going to put my uh, presser foot all the way up against the buckle. I'm going to lower the presser foot. I'm going to move my needle into the right position so I can get closer to the buckle. And you can do any kind of stitches you want. All I'm going to do here is basically uh, a straight stitch and uh, several reversing. So I'm going to go forward. If I run into my clip, I'll just move it. I'm right alongside the buckle. I'm going to go in back or reverse and then probably forward again. So three stitches and then I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to push this over and basically put that stitch right at the outside of that foot again, lower it and do one more of the exact same uh, stitches down here. So this is rather crude, but it does work and that's what I'm going to do. You can do something else if you'd like. Okay, now that we have it all cut apart and we have the buckles on, these two triangles have to be facing in towards each other like this. And then these have to be up. 
So we'll take this one first and we will run it through the buckle. We'll run it through the middle and then through the front. And that gives us a way to uh, tension the bag and we'll do the same thing with this one. And then we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew the end so they don't easily come out of the buckle. So I'm gonna pull out about uh, a foot. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fold this uh, about uh, three quarter of an inch over. There's no rules on this and then fold it again. So this is a double fold. And we, what you wanna do is you wanna sew down the middle and that will keep it from coming through the buckle. We're gonna do that to this one as well. The next step is sewing those webbing straps to the back body. Okay, we're gonna sew the webbing straps to the back body. This is panel 4B. There are two lines here and there is a center line down here. Anytime that's the bottom, you just create a notch in it. Uh, we're gonna take our chalk and do like we did before, kind of fold this back, mark that location. Patterns make everything easy, so you don't have to do a lot of measuring. You do have to do some, obviously. And then we're gonna take this pattern off. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna be tacking our webbing that we just made. This uh, webbing goes on so that the triangle, if everything is laying up, which it is right here, triangle must be pointing in like this. So that means this one goes over here. Let me get it in position for you. And it gets sewn up here, and its triangle is also pointing in with everything up. So you can see the triangles doing this and this. Okay, so that, that means this one goes here and this one goes here and we want that chalk to be the center of the webbing and we're gonna push it all the way up to the top, push it all the way up to the top and we'll sew it at that location. I'm not gonna clip it, I, I'm just gonna sew it. So let's go do that. Okay, all we're doing is tacking this in place. So I'm gonna leave my stitch length at a four or five millimeter and we're gonna sew a quarter inch from the edge. You can do some reversing if you want. Um, again, this is not a stitch that's going to hold it in place. It just keeps it in place so when we come back to this and we sew another panel onto it, that's in the right spot. So we're going to do the same thing here and we'll show you what's next. So I'm, what I'm doing at the bottom edge is measuring up one and a half inches up and this triangle will fall at one and a half inches up. So I'm just going to move it over and that should be at one and a half inches. I'm not measuring at the corner, I'm measuring at the straight edge. So we're gonna sew a quarter inch from the edge. Again, this is like a tacking stitch as well. Uh, there'll be other stitches that hold it in place, but I will do some rever reversing at the beginning and the end. And we will do the same thing to this one, making sure that it too is pointing in and that there are no twists in the webbing. So one and a half inches up from this edge. The backpack's handle is next. It'll be webbing with leather accent. This is the bag handle and it's cut to 10 and a quarter inches. And I did use a hot knife to slightly melt the ends, but I don't want to burn the ends. And it's not a bad idea to actually kind of round the corners slightly uh, with a hot knife. This is our handle uh, from the veg tan that we dyed and uh, it is, just so you know as a reference, it's 10 inches. We're gonna mark it one and five eighths inch from this edge. So one and five eighths inches here, that's lined up. And I wanna just do it with an awl sl slightly in here, kind of scratch that area so I know where to stop sewing because I'm gonna sew here to one and five eighths inch over here and one and five eighths inch over here. So we're gonna mark all the edges to one and five eighths inch and uh, we'll show you what's next. If you have this, you can use this. This, this is a, 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 puts the stitch about one eighth inch away. And this is the leather compass. And I'm just gonna score the material all the way around. Um, we put this on top of our one and a half inch webbing and you should have a perimeter around all the sides. So you wanna center this on this. And we're gonna start sewing at the one and five eighths inch and we're just gonna sew to here and we're gonna do it here and here and we are not gonna do any reversing. Usually I like to put three or four clips on this um, and since we're not gonna be sewing in this area, I'm gonna put them close to the end so hopefully I don't have to remove these. We're gonna set our stitch length to about a three millimeter again. So which is right about there and I'm gonna take some scrap and I'm actually gonna measure it and make sure that uh, stitch tension looks good. We don't wanna run out of bobbin, so make sure you have a, a good bobbin that's uh, full enough to sew this. It won't take much thread, but you don't wanna run out. And we'll check our stitch length to make sure that it's three millimeters or about an eighth of an inch.
Maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. That should be about right. Let's check again. So we're going to put this in and uh, we're going to put this needle right into that area that we determined was one and five eighths inch from the edge. And on that line that we scored, you know, you don't have to have that line. You can use a reference or something like that. So I'm right into it. Needle's buried. I'm going to lower the foot now and I'm going to carefully slow, sew down this. Now I'm going to turn the uh, worker bee power pack system to the slowest speed again. So I have optimal control because you don't want to put a extra hole in leather. You want to sew perfectly. And look at that slow speed control. It's incredible. We're going to sew down to that other spot. Notice that I did not do any reversing and I will not do any reversing when I reach this spot down here as well. Okay, I'm coming close to that spot. One more stitch and I don't think I need to use the reverse lever. Yep, there we go. So now I'm going to make sure the needle's up and I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to pull it out and that side is complete. Now we're going to do the same thing to this side. Now I'm going to take my thread burner. You can also use a lighter for this and just melt the end of the thread a little bit and push it down to kind of create a mushroom top like that since we didn't do any reversing. This is panel 5A. We haven't really started assembly 5 yet, but we need to sew this onto 5A of the handle. So I'm going to fold it over to where this T is and I'm going to mark this and I'm going to mark the center. So we've got that marked and then on this side we have the same thing, a T over here. We're going to do the same thing here. So we have it lined up with this line at the bottom and centered there and I need it right on that edge. And here's my last stitches. I'm going to bury the needle in the third stitch. So there's one, two, and three in that hole there. So my foot is up and I'm just looking through the center of the foot and we have the needle buried in that hole. So now when you're sewing leather, it's a good idea to hold on to the trailing threads for the first two stitches and then you can let go of them. We're going to sew all the way over top of all three of those stitches. So one, two, and I can let go of the trailers, three. Okay, so now I'm going to continue to press on the pedal until the needle is almost going in again, but not quite. Now I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to find the hole directly behind this first stitch. And I'm going to penetrate it with my needle. I'm going to lower my foot and I'm going to sew. Uh, one stitch without going and penetrating again. So just really close to the leather so we get a good stitch tension. Then I'm going to go to the second hole, bury it in there, and do the same thing. So notice I didn't go all the way in. We lift the foot. And now we're in the last hole. So this is actually reversing and locking that stitch in place. Now I can sew forward three times and don't have to worry about anything. Let's make sure this webbing is centered over there. So there we go. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then I'm going to sew all the way to uh, the corner here. And let me show you how we go around the corner here. To go around the corner, this is almost a 90 degree turn. So I'm going to, I don't want to turn with the needle out. I want to turn with the needle buried. And that way, uh, my stitch tension is always the same and I am probably just going to do like a 45 here. There we go. Needles coming up a little bit so that we don't skip a stitch and then they can turn needles buried and I turn all the way and I do my forward here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go around this corner and I'll show you how we sew across. So I'm going to go one more stitch. Okay, needles buried. I'm going to twist. Um, Probably a little bit more than 45 here. There we go. And then straightened out with the needle buried. I'm going to sew up to this uh, stitch. And I'm going to go three stitches in. Okay, I'm going to try to hit this stitch in almost the same holes. And yep, I'm in the same hole actually. One, two, and three. So I have three stitches in and the needle was starting to come up, which is good. Now I'm going to lift my foot with a needle buried and pivot across and we're going to sew 
to this side here. So all the way across. One, two. Now when I hit this side, I'm gonna do some reversing here. So I've hit that side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, go forward until the needle's almost buried. And then I'm gonna go back three stitches. So I'm gonna find that first hole, which is, yeah, I gotta do it right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go forward, almost penetrating the leather, leather but not. And we're gonna find that second hole, our second stitch that we're gonna cross. And I'm gonna go forward here. And that's probably good enough, but I'm gonna do it one more time. So this is my third hole. I know this is a lot, but this is uh, a, good, a good way to do your reversing to make sure that you're going through all the holes. Then we're going to sew directly on top until we reach the end. Now that is the finished job. And now we have uh, leather sewing on uh, with some good reversing there, and no stitch should pull out anywhere. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. This is a thread uh, burner. You can use this or a lighter and you could just touch those threads and then just kind of scrape them with your finger and that kind of creates a nice mushroom head uh, and it uh, basically means it's not going to pull through easily. So when you sew the other side you're going to have a little hump in the, in the handle and that's what you want. We'll turn our attention now to the front flap with leather straps, assembly five. Two and a half inches up from the edge I'm going to use an awl and I'm going to um, poke the leather where I'm basically going to be sewing so I know exactly where I need to stop and I'm going to do that on both sides. There we go. So I'm going to use my leather compass and uh, I'm going to go all the way up and around the front as well. We don't have to worry about the top because it's going to be sewing in. We're going to do this to both pieces. Okay, so I can see my two and a half inch mark there. I'm not sure you can, but I'm gonna bury the needle in that mark and in the score line that I have. And we have our stitch length set to three millimeters. And we're just gonna sew from here all the way to this one, doing no reversing. I turned down the Worker Bee Power Pack system to minimal speed so that I can handle this corner easily. And we're going to do the same process that we've shown before. Needle buried to start making turns to make this rounded corner. Sewing these backpacks with the Sarite Ultrafeed LS also works fantastic. Here we're sewing leather that is black for a different bag. This foot's available for the LS. It's the smooth left foot set for Ultrafeed LS and it does a phenomenal job of sewing leather. So here's our start point for the leather. What, I, what you can do with this, you don't have to score the leather with this. So I'm going to put my needle where I need to start, which is right there where I've marked it. And I didn't score it with the leather compass here. Now all I do is I use that outside foot as a guide to sew along the leather. So as long as I keep it lined up with the outside of the foot, and you can install a magnet on this as well, but I don't find it necessary, then I can easily keep that stitch at the right distance all along the edge of this leather. So let me show you even just going around this corner. And again, using that uh, Worker B power pack system for super slow speed control makes this job nice and easy. Now look at that, that looks phenomenal and I didn't have to score the leather. Okay, this is uh, assembly five, fashioning the front uh, flap assembly with leather straps. And I have 5B, I have 5A, which we've already put the handle on, and we have 5C. We're gonna take 5B and there are marks on this here and here. We're gonna transfer those marks to the waxed canvas by folding them like we've done before. And we're gonna remove this pattern. We're gonna take the clear acrylic ruler and we're gonna strike a line parallel to the edge uh, at that uh, location. 
make sure that it's parallel. This is going to be visible. And we're going to go all the way down. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. So these leather accents go to the inside of those marks, one here and one here. And they should be flush with this top edge. And we'll take it to the machine and we're going to sew. Three millimeter stitch and I do no reversing at the top. And we're just going to sew down that line that we struck with the uh, leather compass. And when we get to the bottom where we started uh, sewing this end piece, I'm going to sew uh, two stitches in and go across and then go back up again. We'll show you when we get down to here because this is all stuff you've seen already. Okay, we're coming up to the previous stitches that we did. We're going to sew... Um, oh, that one landed almost right into it, which is perfect. Doesn't have to. So there's one stitch in and one more. I'm going to go... Okay, and I'm going to make sure the needle's coming up, so I'm going to roll the balance wheel by hand. And now I'm going to pivot by lifting my foot, and I'm going to sew directly across, hopefully in a straight line. And then when I hit the stitches on this side, I'm going to sew up in the same manner. And if I'm too far into the stitches, I'll use the reverse lever to adjust it. Yeah, i got to push down on the reverse letter, lever to hit the stitches. And the needle was coming up, we'll just lower the foot and we'll sew up this side in the same manner. This is 5A and this is 5B. 5A is going to go outside surfaces facing each other. And then we will sew across here, reversing in the beginning and reversing over here at the end, 3 8 inch of, away from this raw edge, sewing through the leather as well. With no reversing is done in the leather. I put the magnetic guide back on and I want to sew back into my uh, four or five millimeter stitch length, whichever you've selected, which is right about there. We're in straight stitch, needles in center position, and we will sew here. You can clip this if you want, which is not a bad idea, but because that webbing, webbing handle is kind of in the way, but I'm, I don't think it's necessary. So right here, and again, we're going to do some reversing here. Okay. And just line up the edges. Now I'm just going to sew over that uh, leather. And we'll sew all the way to the other end in the same process. Okay, so that one's done. We're, we're going to do a top stitch, but not before we install 5C. 5C, I'm going to take the pattern off. And this doesn't have a right side or a wrong side, but it's basically going to be laid over the edge like this with a 3 8 inch seam here. And then it too will splay open. Okay, that's sewing on. Now I'm going to turn this over just to show you the top stitch. We're going to fold this one over here, and we're going to fold this one in towards the handle as well, the seam allowance. And we're going to put a top stitch. We're going to get rid of our magnetic guide, which is a quarter inch from that uh, first fold, or first stitch, I should say, which means that the outside foot is up against that uh, stitch. And we will sew to the other end, splaying our fabric. In other words, I pull the fabric so that I'm on that first stitch. And we will sew here, reversing. To the other end, we'll do some reversing. And then we're going to do the same thing here, which goes through our leather as well. OK, we're sewing on the opposite side of the center foot here because this is less fabric than it is over here. So I don't hit the throat of the sewing machine. And we will do no reversing when we go through that leather. Okay, so now you know how to do this with this top stitch as well. Now we'll be sewing the back body to the front flap. Okay, we're going to secure the back body, which is panel or assembly four, to the front flap, which is the assembly we just did five. Webbing is up. Uh, we'll just kind of put it in the center. This one goes right sides facing each other, and we will sew three eighths inch along this edge. Uh, reversing only at the beginning and the end, but you do need to make sure that your webbing is nice and straight when you're doing this. I'm going to put my magnetic guide back on the 3 8 inch, which is right about there, and we're going to sew across this. Matching up the edges. That webbing is straight. The other one's off the table, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Okay, so we're getting up to this one. I'm going to make sure that it's straight now that it's on the table. And that looks perfect. And we'll sew to this end. 
This is the seam allowance on the back side of that stitch we just did. It's going to go up towards the handle, which is sewn here. And I'm going to do a top stitch. I got to remove the magnetic guide. And I think you get you get the point, but we're going to put a top stitch right here, which is a quarter inch from the fold, doing no reversing except for at the two ends. And we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. The top of the bag will have a stiffener, and then we're going to join the lining to the inside flap. 6B and 8A are the stiffener materials, which this is a stiffener material, and there's two layers in each one of these, so two layers here and two layers here. I like to just measure it. It's 11 inches, and this one is 11 inches. This is three and a half and this one is four and a half. So I actually don't use the pattern for that, though we do provide it. So what I'll do uh, across here is I'll, I'll uh, measure three and a half here, and I, I will use uh, a grease pencil and just mark all the way across, and we'll cut off the excess, and then four and a half. So we're gonna cut these to that size. This is panel 6A, it's waxed canvas, and I'm gonna fold it uh, here and mark where that line is and then we'll fold it here just like we did on all the other stuff and then we're going to remove the pattern two layers of 6b go between or right up basically on top of those lines and centered left and right and then we sew this in place going all the way to the edge and sew it here and sew it here okay so i'm going to sew a quarter inch from the edge of this plastic, and I do want to start off, and this is centered left and right, like we talked about. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning, and then we just sew through the uh, stiffener material, which is actually a pattern material, and we'll do some reversing at the other end, and then we're going to put the stitch here. This is assembly two with the inside pocket, and this is the one uh, that we just finished, six with a stiffener on it. This is the outside surface. This is the outside surface of the liner. They go over top of each other here. Top sides lined up. We sew 3 8 inch across here and then we'll do a top stitch in the lining. So I'm gonna sew it, but I'm not gonna show sewing it. Okay, so there's our stitch that we did. Then we're gonna take the seam allowance and we're gonna fold it back towards the lining like that. And we're gonna put a top stitch, uh, about a quarter inch or so away from that here. Now we get to sew the gusset to the back body, the bag starting to come together. This is assembly five, the webbing is facing up. We're gonna take the gusset for the main body with the uh, loop fastener system here. So this is the lining side, this is the canvas side. Canvas side would be facing this canvas. So it goes on like this. Uh, I have a notch at the bottom and I have a notch at the center position. We're going to clip it in place around the perimeter like this with the lining up all the way up to here. Wherever it stops, it stops and then all the way up to here. We do want to cut a few slits at the corners to help it to go around and you don't want to go deeper than 3 eighths of an inch and it's okay if you do cut into that uh, first stitch because that's a tacking stitch. The goal of this to go around here is you can actually make adjustments at the corners slightly. What we want is we want this to fall in the same spot. Now does it have to fall here? No, it could actually fall down there, or it could fall up here, but we want this side to fall directly across from it which we have it perfect here. You can make adjustments uh, to sometimes to the corner just to make that happen. If your cinders aren't perfect, make adjustments so the tops come out directly across from each other. I also like to use a pin at the tops basically to keep them from moving because again that is the important area. So I'm going to put a pin through there and I'm also going to put a pin over here. We want to go this direction with a pin on this side so that we can easily pull it out with the white uh, end of it. And uh, now we're going to take it to the machine. All right, we have our magnetic guide on at 3 eighths of an inch. We're going to lower our foot and we're going to start sewing here at the top, doing a little bit of reversing. Not necessary to do a ton because we're going to have a top stitch. I'm going to move this out of the way and sew down to that corner. When I get to the corner, I'll show you what I'm going to do there again. And then, uh, and then we'll show you what we do if the fabric creeps a little bit. 
So here I'm going to press down just to make sure that I don't sew, try to not to sew too many wrinkles in this. I'm okay if I sew a little teeny wrinkle into it. Press down. I'm going to bury my needle by rotating the balance wheel. I'm going to work this wrinkle out by pressing on it. I hope you can see my hands aren't getting in the way, I hope. There's a little bit of a wrinkle there, but it's really minute. There's a, I'm going to lift the foot here, try to push this wrinkle out before I sew through it. Perfect. Before I sew up this leg all the way, sometimes the fabric creeps a little bit. And you can, I can see here, if, if I look up here, it looks like there's more fabric, a little bit more here than there is down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push this assembly and cause a little bit of wrinkles here to basically shorten up this gusset. So see there's a little wrinkle there? I'm pushing that in and that way the fabric kind of, see there's another wrinkle. I'm not sewing in, in any wrinkles. I'm just kind of trying to make up for the fact that it's probably going to be, it was going to be a little bit off. And in the end, doing this actually shrinks up that gusset a little bit. So now I think I'm fine. Looks like I'm almost directly across from each other as far as stitch to stitch. So that's what you do. And when we get up here, we'll do some reversing. In this chapter, we'll be joining the inside back lining and the inside flap to the back body. Wow, that looks great like that. So now what we do is we, everything's in the center here, and we push these sides in. The lining is facing out. We fold these corners, kind of what I do is I often create two folds so that they lay fairly flat like that. Okay. So we got it all nice and flat. Then this is the side with the inside pocket. This is the lining side. The lining goes over the top of that gusset area. And we clip this around the perimeter uh, with clips. And we're going to sew around it. Uh, but we're going to leave an opening here on the one side, whether it be this side or that side. So let's clip this in place. What I like to do is I like to make sure that my lining is lined up. Now it doesn't have to be, it could be up a little bit or down a little bit, but it really looks better if it's lined up. If it's not, it, and, 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 the, and moving it makes these ends off, I'd rather have this be right than the ends. So I'm going to pin it so the lining's just right and it looks like everything is lining up not beautifully that way. Uh, I'm going to clip it, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, I said pinning, but I'm going to clip it there and then I'm going to do the same thing over here, making sure the lining is lined up over here and then we're going to clip it around the perimeter. Along one of the sides where that pocket is in the webbing, I'm going to come down several inches and just mark roughly 10 inches so I know that I don't want to sew that closed because I need to pull it right side out. Now, now the leather at the bottom for our fasteners needs to be pushed into this assembly. So we don't want to sew through this when we sew around the perimeter. So I'm actually going to fold this up. This will create a little bit of a crease in the leather, but when we get to it, I'll show you how we do that. Now notice how these corners aren't rounded exactly the same. That is not a big deal at all. It doesn't bother me. I'm going to trim one so they match. That way it's just easier to sew around it that way. Um, that'll probably be the same for you. Okay, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to remove this clip and uh, it doesn't matter exactly where you start, but I would like to start here just to lock this in place. And I'm not going to do any reversing at all right here. Um, this is going to have a top stitch as well. I'm going to sew down to my stop position. I'm going to reverse, making sure that I reverse well because we have to pull a large amount of fabric through this. I'm going to lift my foot now and I'm just going to go all the way to this stop, or start position I should say, lower my foot and sew around the perimeter. I also forgot to do reversing so I'm going to go back. There we go. Okay. Don't forget the reversing. And we're just going to sew around the perimeter uh, in the same fashion that we've shown with everything else. Okay, we're coming around this corner here. I folded the material back like this just because it doesn't fall off the table. But we have to be concerned about the uh, leather straps. So when I get around this corner, I'm going to stop right there with my needle buried. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to pull this strap back so I don't sew through it. 
I don't really want to fold it. I just want to push it back and kind of let it relax back there. And then I'm going to lift the fabric here in the middle, which basically brings that uh, front fabric so that it's even. And so past that. Now, if the fabric lifts up like it did a little bit, that's not a big deal. Don't be too super concerned about it. And when we get to this, this one, we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, we're coming to where we began sewing and we're going to do some reversing there right over top of the previous stitches and we are done, ready to turn it right side out after we clip the corners. Down at the corners, all four corners, I'm going to cut small triangles out which will allow the corner to uh, just sit a little bit smoother. So we're going to do this to all four corners, cutting out some triangles like that. Okay, we gotta turn it right side out. This is probably the more difficult task. Uh, all this plastic uh, stiffener has to go through too. Again, I like to push it in, grab it with my hand, and kind of pull it out. I'm going to put my hand inside and kind of push out the corners down here so we're on our seam. And we're going to do this all around the perimeter and we'll show you what's next. Okay, we're going to be sewing uh, the, the gusset, uh, out, putting a top stitch right here, but we need to close up this pocket where we turned it right side out. And we pulled nicely on everything so that it's on that first stitch. So what I want to do is I want to fold this over so it looks good. So let's fold it back so it gets sewn in when we do the top stitch. Like that and like that. And we also want to put uh, the say right tag on the inside. This shows the world that you did it yourself. Kind of a, about an inch or so down from the top of the lining. And then we'll fold, we'll fold this back and clip it. Now make sure this fold stays in place where we have that opening. So this comes back and we want to be on that first stitch. So I'm going to take a clip and I'm going to clip it there. And then you can open it up and, and check it. Where that tag is, I'm going to clip it one more time to make sure that it stays there. And that should work well. And then we're going to clip it where this was folded. You probably can't see it, but I'm folding it nicely and I'm going to make sure the fold stays in there with my fingers and I'm going to clip it at that uh, stitch to make sure that fold doesn't come out in a couple spots. And we're going to go ahead and um, clip around the perimeter making sure that we're on our, our, uh, our first stitch. In other words, folded right up against it. So here at the webbing, what I'll do is pull a little bit on the webbing, clamp it down, put a clip there and go around. Okay, the wax canvas is pretty bulky at the, this edge or this corner and this corner. And sometimes, making sure that the leather's out of the way, you can take a hammer, and that actually does a pretty good job of compressing it. Just make sure you don't smash it with the leather under there. Okay, before we sew it, we have to be concerned about these webbing straps, because if they stay here, then you're gonna have to sew through them. And you don't want that. So what you want to do is you want to actually fold them back like this. And that way they are out of the way. So you can start sewing here and sew all the way around without them being in the way. So remember to do that. Fold the webbing straps up so you can start sewing here and you don't have to sew through the webbing. Okay, what I like to do when I'm doing this, because I'm sewing through a lot of materials, I actually go a half revolution more on the tension. Uh, even though I haven't even done any tests in it, I just know that it usually requires a little bit more tension. We get our webbing out of the way by pushing it to, to the side. We're going to start sewing here at the top. Now, this is a lot of bulk, so I'm going to rotate the balance wheel so my presser feet are as high as they can possibly go. 
and we're going to do a top stitch about a quarter inch from this fold. So I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm actually going to walk this part of the assembly or do it really slowly with my pedal in forward and reverse because I don't want to get a needle deflection, which is possible with all this thickness. So I'm going to lock it well with a couple reversing stitches. Okay, once that's done, we can start sewing around the perimeter. And this is a stitch that everybody's going to see, so take your time on it and make sure that it's pressed on that first stitch that you made initially. Okay, we'll show you what we do when you get to the corner. Okay, we're coming close to our corner. I don't do any extra reversing over that tab for the webbing. We already sewed the bejeebers out of it. So I'm gonna push the corner down. There's a lot of bulk here at the corner trying to keep on that first stitch. And you will sew a few little dinky wrinkles in here, but it really does look good with this wax canvas. It's a pretty thick canvas. So keep going. Those wrinkles are all acceptable to me. Now that's a pretty big wrinkle, so I'm gonna lift my foot and I'm gonna press it down a little bit, lower my foot. Don't forget to lower your foot or you're gonna cause sewing problems. I'm gonna fold this flap up so that it's not hanging off the table. That way I don't have to worry about things getting caught. Press, press, press. So, so, so. If you run into a big uh, fold, again, flatten it. Best as possible, lower the foot and so. Okay, so that's what we do when you get to the corners. We're going to sew all the way around and do some reversing at the top, being careful because it's really thick at the top. Here we are at the top. This is where it's really, really bulky. So go slowly. Do your reversing carefully. Hopefully you have a heavy duty sewing machine like the Sarite Ultra Feed sewing machine. And there we go. Next up, we'll be joining the back body to the main body. This is the assembly one front of our uh, bag with the pocket, the exterior pocket. This is 7A, and we do have a mashup mark at the bottom, which we'll cut a notch in. We'll remove the pattern from this. Outside surfaces face each other, so 7A goes on top, and we sew a 3 8 inch uh, stitch reversing at the beginning and the end. We'll not show that. Okay. So this assembly is done, and we do not do a top stitch here. We take this assembly that we just sewed, and if this is the inside pocket, and we turn the gussets so that they are out like this, basically turned wrong side out. And then that would mean outside surfaces, this is the webbing, goes down over the out, outside pocket with the gussets facing out like this. And we start to secure this with this edge, right up in that uh, stitch. So I'm gonna clip it all around the perimeter like we've shown before. We are gonna cut slits at the corners of this gusset to go around this, and then we'll show you what's next. Okay, so this is what it looks like clipped all around the perimeter. We cut our little slits in this. We're gonna take it to the machine and sew. Make sure that you don't sew any of your straps on the inside. I can feel that this is all a free runway. Okay, this is kind of just like everything else. We're sewing 3 8 inch of, away from the raw edge and we'll sew around the perimeter. There's no reason to leave any gaps for this one because uh, we don't have to pull anything right side out. Okay, we decided to show you the corner because I, I use these edge pliers for the corner. See how it's off already? It's because there's so much bulk here. So what I do is I grab the material and I pull it over with the edge, edge pliers and then you can easily sew this area and then I just move them over here to get it to go around to the next area. Um, they, they can definitely be helpful. I use them a lot in sewing. Um, you can get away without them, but I really do recommend them. Okay. Now we'll be stuffing everything inside and pulling the lining over the bag assembly and sewing. Now that that's sewing on, we have to take this, everything and push it in towards the middle. So all the bulk goes towards the middle. So we have free rain. This, this actually folds over and it too gets pushed in the middle like this, which creates a big bump, which I'll have to probably press down a little bit on. And then this lining gets 
pushed over and we create a big taco or I'm trying to think of what kind of food this would represent. I'm not sure. It, come down here to the middle point. That's why there's a matchup mark. And the first step we want to do, we're going to be sewing this direction. So I'm going to put a pin in uh, going the direction that we're going to be sewing from at the middle position, uh, which basically makes your job a little bit easier because everything is kind of pinned in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use clips and clip it, and then I'm going to pin it because I want this to stay in place, and I don't want this bulk to get in the way of my sewing, so I'm going to push it back inside there. We don't want that in our sewing path. So let's go ahead and use some clips, and then we'll, we'll pin it, and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Now I've got it pinned here and here and two pins on this side. Everything laid nice and flat. Now the web or the leather, that's a danger point. You want to make sure that you don't sew this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of kick it back so I don't accidentally sew that because if I put a stitch in that, I'm going to see it forever. So there, it's kicked back, kicked back there, and then I'm going to pin this bottom edge as well. Don't be concerned if things don't line up perfectly. Um, they just need to be close. When you get this kind of bulk in here, uh, it is not uncommon for it to be slightly off a little bit. All right, so I, I'm happy with every, the way everything's laying. We do have to make sure that we leave a gap to pull this right side out. So again, I'm just gonna mark approximately 10 inches or so along a side. I don't like to mark into a corner and I like to have the top uh, secured. So we'll reverse here and here. We're gonna sew around it. <clears throat> All right, I've got my needle buried and I'm starting at the top and I will do some reversing there as well. Make sure you don't sew through anything that's valuable, including your fingers. Do some reversing here at your stop point. And then I'm going to leave the pins in place. I'm going to lift my foot and just go to the next start point here, leaving that open. All right there. That's what these beautiful pins do. They make it easy. I'm going to leave that pin in just for a little bit while I do my reversing to tack it in place. Don't just tack it a little bit, tack it a lot. We've got a lot of bulk to pull through here. Then I'm going to remove the pin. We'll go around the perimeter uh, like we've shown many times before, making sure that we're not going to sew through our webbing or anything else, and we'll show you what's next. If your sides are off a little bit like you see here, don't worry about it. There's a lot of bulk in here and it wants to lift up the lining. But remember, this is just lining that we're securing down, so it's not going to be a big deal if it's a little bit off or if even if there's a few wrinkles at the bo Ow! bottom. <laughs> So there's a little wrinkle there, no big deal. Could use the edge pliers to pull it out a little bit and pull this pin. Ow! Okay, you can see how the bottom edge isn't perfectly lined up, nor is the sides, but uh, the wrinkles are minimal. And now uh, we have this opening, so we're gonna pull these two pins that are holding the opening shut and we have to turn it right side out. And I'm going to grab the flap first with the leather and kind of pull it through. And then push it through. Okay, so now it looks like it's turned right side out, but it's not. We have to turn this as well. So to do that, just take your hand on the inside like this and pull it out of its little shell because it's got to be turned right side out too. Push, push, push. There we 
we go. She's coming together. We're going to straighten this all out and put our hand inside of it to, to push out all the corners, just like we've shown before. But this is what you want. The next step is to top stitch this, this front flap, but we don't want to sew through the leather. We want to pull it back and we're going to sew a top stitch a quarter inch all around, making sure that it's folded nicely on that uh, first stitch and that the corners are pushed out. They should have been done so already. We're going to start right up here and sew all the way around and stop right over here. Now I've pulled it back as far as I can. My presser feet are up so they're as high as they can possibly go. Uh, and we don't have to be on top of the pass stitch. We just have to be close to it. So I'm going to hold my trailer threads and I am going to do some reversing here. And I actually have to help the fabric back up a little bit because of the fact that there's a lot of bulk. So there we go. And now we'll just sew around the perimeter. Now you can see we didn't begin our stitches on top of the previous one because this is really bulky. It's harder to start on a bump like that. And then it's easier to come closer when you're actually riding up onto a bump. But again, we just did reversing a few uh, millimeters from the previous stitches. Okay, we have some clips. We have to do a top stitch here, but we also have to close up this hole where we pulled everything through. So we're gonna fold that fabric back. I won't be able to show that well, but uh, you, you basically get the concept. You're gonna put your hands inside it. You're gonna make sure it's folded nicely into this edge as, as best as possible. Then you're gonna clip it and you're gonna sew around. So uh, actually I can feel it already. It feels pretty good just like that. And I do uh, actually clip it in place um, and then I look at it from the inside because you can kind of see whether or not you've got it closed up, that hole, I mean, and whether your fold looks good. So let me get it clipped and then we'll show you. Okay, I have clipped it where the opening is. I'm not going to clip it anywhere else around. That's a choice you can make. I can sew around this pretty easily with it like this. I just need to make sure that that lining looks good. And I've already looked inside. You probably can't see it, but it's folded nicely and that's all that matters. Now we'll take it and sew it. So the pocket is facing down. The clips for the pocket opening for us are on this side. This is the easiest side to sew. So again, this is how we're sewing it right now um, with the outside pocket facing down. I'm gonna press really hard here. This is very, very bulky at the corner and it may cause your machine some issues. So do this one carefully at the two corners. And we're gonna sew a quarter inch from that edge. And I'm going to slowly sew in reverse here to make sure I don't get any needle deflection. Reverse well. And then we'll uh, make sure it's folded on that stitch. Okay, since I didn't clip it, I've got to be cognitive of this the entire time that I'm sewing. So I'm going to actually stop every once in a while and hold it on that first clip and sew. Okay, I think you get the concept. This is done just like everything else, except for the fact that I didn't clip it. Um, so we'll show you what it looks like after we're done. I'm gonna just use a thread burner again. This is an optional choice you can do, or you can just cut your threads uh, very close to the edge. We just accomplished this top stitch here around the front of the bag. However, we could have done the top stitch here first, then did this, which is probably a better technique, but it's no big deal. So we missed this step. So we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna create a top stitch right along this edge. To sew this top stitch, the pocket is facing down and I'm gonna spread this out because, and then I'm gonna make sure my feet are up at the highest position possible and push it under there. And I'm gonna try to get it back Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, right there. So that's exactly where I want to start. I'm basically directly across from the stitches that are to the back side of it. And let's see if I can do this neatly. Fold this material and we'll do a little bit of reversing here and hopefully this is going to look really good in the end.
a little bit of a bump, so I'm going to help the machine pull it through. There we go. Okay, we're going to sew the other side. And I want to be right across from it and try to sew as close as possible and then do some reversing. Uh, but I don't want to go more than one or two stitches in reverse. There we go. Top stitch is done. Installing fasteners and rivets for the handle and making a stiffener is next. I've basically uh, kind of had the bag so that it's sitting as, as neatly as possible. And you can see these flaps go over. And what I want to do is try to determine where the center would be where it rests. And that's right about there. So I know that I want my hole at that location. So I'm going to put it on top of here. And I'm going to use the number two hole cutter right about there. Now you don't have to be perfect because obviously the cover is flexible and we want to be centered. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. This one, I'm going to measure it to make sure it's in the same spot. This uh, button goes in and then one of these uh, screws onto the backside and then we use our key just like we did before. There we go. This is 8B. It's lining fabric that's used for the stiffener. I'm going to mark where the lines are with my chalk. This is the center line, basically. And then remove the pattern. We're going to cut the hook uh, fastener system to four inches each. These will go inside the marked lines. And this is the, where it's going to be folded. So it needs to be basically centered between here and here, and we'll sew these on. Okay, so the hook has been sewn on the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side, the urethane coating. We're gonna fold it in half so right sides are facing each other. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the ends uh, at, uh, at a quarter inch, not three eighths like we normally did with everything. So there's a quarter inch. So we'll just sew down this edge, and when we reach the other one, we'll do some reversing, and we'll do the same thing to the opposite the short edge, leaving this, this edge open. Turn it right side out, and press all the corners out. Okay, these are the last two stiffeners. There's two layers of it. Put it on the inside of this uh, stiffener pocket. Push it down all the way. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this top edge in over the plastic and then we're gonna fold this one in as well to give a finished look. So let me clip it and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done clipping it. Okay, so there's what it looks like after it's clipped. And it hooks on that side and then all we'll do is sew deeper inside this edge, doing some reversing at the beginning until we get to the end and do reversing there. Okay, there's the hook and the loop is on the bottom. So you just take the stiffener and you stick it to the bottom and try to get it centered at the bottom of the bag, and your bag is complete. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure there's nothing under here. We're gonna lay this over, and we're gonna put some rivets in the handles. Uh, the handles are sewing down, but these rivets are definitely gonna add some strength to it. And this tool, this hole punch is included in the kit, and I've used it a few times already. So what I wanna do is I wanna put it fairly close to this uh, stitch here so that the rivet takes some of the abuse. And I want to put it in the center. So you can measure this if you'd like. Uh, and then I'm just going to give it a few taps. And it does take a few taps to get through and make sure the hole goes all the way through and use a cutting pad of some sort on the bottom side. Okay, so then I'm going to take one of these um, rivets. You get a lot of rivets in the kit. So there is the part with the male and there's the female. Now here's a choice that you can do. I've just put little uh, the females on top here, but you could put uh, four on each of the corners if you'd like. These are just as, as a uh, suggestion. I'm going to put the male on the underside 
and through the hole like that. And then this tool, this is the base and it has a concave side. This is the flat side. I'm going to put the concave side up and put, make sure that that rivet is on top of that as so. Then I'm going to push the female over top of this into that hole and press down a little bit. And then this tool also comes in the kit. You want the concave surface, which is this side, over top of the double cap rivet and hold it in place and then give it a few taps. Now you can go as hard as you want. The harder you go, the more the dome kind of collapses, but uh, that's probably pretty secure in itself. I might give it a few more little blows just to make sure that it's in there well. There we go. And then we're also going to put one um, right here on the opposite side, centered, and we'll do the same thing to the other side. So this process is done exactly in the same way. Here are the rivets installed, the double cap rivets. And there's what it looks like on the underside, and we're going to do the same thing over here. Our waxed canvas backpack with leather accents is now complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. All the materials to build this backpack are included in the kits. The only items that are not are the products to finish off the leather, which is optional. Those items are listed here in the materials list. The tools are not included in the kit. This is the entire list of tools that we use to make this backpack. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below or feel free to email or call us. We're glad to help. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and be sure to click the bell to be notified of new tutorial videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.